Hey everybody, this is Bobo the Vulture. This is Let's Play Gran Turismo 2. Last time we ran around in deep forest with a ridiculously overpowered car for the competition. Question is whether or not I want to do that some more, or find some other place for that car to go run around and be happy. R5 is not my strongest suit anyways. GT300 Championship. What is the... Ooh. I could enter this car in the GT300 Championship. Let's see what other kinds of cars compete in this championship, shall we? I actually like the idea of taking this car out in this championship. I like it a lot. That would make for a long video. So these are GT cars from a very specific championship in Japan. And they're all the modern version of whatever the car... For that year, the year the Gran Turismo 2 came out, they're all sort of the modern car for that. So putting this car in might meet the letter of the law, but they might be annoyed. Let's go to the Gran Turismo All-Stars. Eh, you know what? Let's try to win Laguna Seca. So many have tried, so many have fallen. Is it time for the fallen to have some revenge? Of the them? Let's find out. This does strike me as a car that might be a little too unstable for this. Like, it's sort of unstable in a fun way to be driving around in a race where you're not too worried about the competition you're up against. Shut my mouth. This turns out to be a great car for this uh, type of thing. As long as I don't lose it in the uh, in the turn one hairpin here, which is possible, if not even likely. It's going to be the car that doesn't. Okay, so clearly I was misreading the bump before the corkscrew.
but uh, aside from that, that lap actually went very well. Venturi or Yes, the Venturi. I guess also part of the problem is I just don't know how to execute that last turn in a way that just doesn't get me completely ground down to the stop. So this guy's uh, nicked ahead of me again, which means I've got to There we go. A little inside move like that. That I'm not sure would be considered cricket in actual racing, but it worked. Plus, we got through the corkscrew without dying. It's a major accomplishment. And that went okay. I'm actually a little ways ahead of these folks. Coming into the hairpin? That can't be right. best lines through here now, but I guess I'm maintaining enough overall speed that uh, nobody's catching up here. I'm actually managing to like sanely navigate the corkscrew at Laguna Seca. I don't think I've ever been able to say with confidence that I do that on a regular basis. This must be some kind of magic car! Just gotta be careful not to spin on uh, acceleration coming out of that last turn. You're the magic car! You did it! Oh my gosh, car! You beat the Venturi and the Celine! And the wow, the R390 GT1 ended up going way back. So I think at some point in time I said the Vector M12 LM edition never existed or something like that, or I don't think there ever was one. Apparently they did take one of the chassis that uh, they had hoped to sell. And, um, actually, uh, did sort of rig it up in a Le Mans style configuration, um, and tried to race it. And, um, you know, they had teething problems trying to get the car developed, and they didn't really have enough of a budget to be able to afford having teething problems. 
So, yeah. Basically, it was a thing where they sort of had the business plan of, well, we got this name, we got this car, we got this thing set up. Um, but we don't have the established name already of uh, Ferrari, or Lamborghini, or whatever. Anybody else competing in the market for extra exotic, crazy sports cars. So we need to make up for that by going out and establishing a racing pedigree. Something that Ferrari did many, many, many years ago and still does to this day. Lamborghini never really did. Um, but they're credited by many people as uh, inventing sort of the modern supercar. car just has a frenetic energy about it. It may just be the way that it's geared. It may just be how sort of twitchy it is. Um, how it sort of tends to hop on, uh, you know, anything other than Billiard table smooth surfaces. It's a very tall six gear, doesn't it? my way into the lead. Just two laps. It's a pretty heavy score, man. Yeah, it's definitely not the fastest car, but... Not the fastest car, but it's an endearing car. It'll get this job done. I know it will. I have faith in it. It'll get this job done as long as I'm not already sort of tired. It's the kind of car that if I've been playing a long time and I just got myself real tired, it would become one savory to be trying to drive. I can see it now. See, pretty much going to go out of control every time right there. And that's not a really good place to do that because you want to have a nice exit out of that turn going as smoothly and quickly as you can because then you've got all this to build up to. You're basically setting up for this whole part of the track right here. It's 
especially rubbing up against a wall like that. I was trying a slightly different thing because I'm noticing that this car, you just give it a little dab on the brakes to uh, move the no to shift the weight forward to the nose. You get a nice quick turn in. You want to be careful about doing that kind of thing, uh, especially in a rear-wheel drive car. Just dab it on the brakes, especially while you're in the middle of the turn. Like turning and braking at the same time can be risky in uh, rear engine or rear-wheel drive cars because uh, when you're asking the wheels to do too much, the default response is to oversteer, which is to spin when done too much. So, you know, you don't want to spin a car. Well, like here, I'd usually break down to like fourth or something. I just need to dab on the brakes, which takes it down to fifth, but it does it. That was the best exit so far. Yay! And now I got another half million dollars to add to my fortune. Fame and fortune. Fame and fortune. We know what all these cars are like and what they're all about. We know what this race is all about. I just wanted to do it. It's a fun race to do, guys. I don't know whether or not uh, it gets tiresome to see, but... It's basically like a, a Let's Play where you get to see the... An RPG Let's Play where you get to see the character level up. <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. Um, but now, what we're doing here is good work. It's good it's good. So, that's the Gran Turismo All-Stars 5 races. Let's go to the... Oh. I say go to the garage. I completely bypassed the home icon. Going to the map instead. That was silly. Oh, hey. What's this? Well, first of all, yes. Let's sell the Speed 12 and get half a million dollars. Wait, no, no, I did want to sell. It's been sold. R390 GT1 Road Car 97. There you go, folks. They had to make a road-going version of a lot of these cars um, to make things nice and legal for racing in Le Mans. Let's see what they have to say. First thing in the GT class, the 1997 Le Mans 24 hour. This model became known as the R390 GT1, would appear a second time in the 1988 Le Mans event. The R390 GT1 was developed with Britain's TWR, Tom Walkinshaw Racing. Tom Walkinshaw passed away here uh, a couple years back, I guess. Which is too bad. He, um, he also ran the Aeros Formula One team for a number of years. He's a very big name in um, sports car racing, uh, especially in the 80s. Uh, he was uh, one of the big names behind the Jaguar um, Group C prototypes, um, which were not necessarily the Jaguars themselves, but Group C was sort of a high point of uh, sports car prototype racing in a lot of people's minds. Um, it was designed by Tony Southgate. Instead of uh, inside its carbon fiber monocoque, lies a mid-mounted VRH35L three and a half liter twin turbocharged V8 and a transversely mounted six speed sequential gearbox. Okay, da -da -da. the 1998 model 390 GT1 is based on the seven. Model even more advanced with modifications added to the exterior and interior. Superb aerodynamics and steering system. The greatest improvement at all is seen the new long tail and the elimination of split rear wing. This improvement of the rear end design gives Dramatically lower air resistant coefficient and greater aerodynamic downforce. With a car like this, it's not surprising that Kaz Katsuyoshi Hiroshino and his Japanese team drove their R390 GT1 all the way to the winter circle in the 1998 Le Mans 24 hour race. Is that so? Well, I'll be danged. There you go. I'm going to get in this car and see whether or not there's a place that I can take it. Says it's a road car. 
I do need a car for the mid-engine rear-wheel drive championship challenge. No, I don't. And not anymore. It would barely not have qualified for that one. But, hey! We go to the high speed ring with it. Oh, oh, I tell you what we could do. <sighs> I would say there is no more of a pure sports car than this probably in the game. Um... Oh, we don't have uh, any other tires for this. I might have to go get um, super soft tires for this car if I plan on using it for a lot of stuff. Probably slightly against the spirit of this race because this is basically just a racing car that uh, they made uh, road legal versions of so that they could race it at Le Mans. But if they're not going to give any definitions to what a pure sports car is, I feel less guilty about entering this in this championship than I feel annoyed at them entering cars from the 90s in the 90s sports car championship. Besides, this car is apparently not going to run away with it. Surprisingly enough, unless you basically just get the car super slowed down and just do a tire burnout. The default handling characteristic of this car is definitely understeer. You would not think that of like a crazy mid-engine prototype, and yet here it is. Pass everybody in the uh, last turn or two. Well, that's most of it done. That's the rest of it done. In a very cheap fashion. Crude but effective. Yeah. If I was anybody else in this race, I'd be incredibly annoyed right now. Just look at the Lancia Stratos. Crazy ass wedge. Yes, wedge with a Ferrari Dino engine in it, if I remember right. 
Although, from a different time, that's also a homologation special. They basically built those so that they could make the crazy uh, rally car version. Lotus Europa, another funky ass thing. So many funky things. Funky, funky. Funky, jazzy. No, I'm okay. I'll continue. So, there you go. That car has earned its keep. It didn't even have to, though. Because I got it for free. So, that is a double value added car right there. Ah. Uh, hmm, hmm. I wonder how it would go in the deep forest. That might be too much for it. And I tell you what, let's just look at what the car is, and then I'll go rush off and save the game. I want to see what my, pro what my prize is. Angel T01. Tom's Angel T01. Yes? <laughs> Let's unveil. It was created the first step towards manufacturing and marketing a Tom's brand sports car, which has been the dreams of Tom's ever since its establishment. Tom's GB, Britain, takes credit as the manufacturer of the Tom's Angel. Signed by Martin Ogleve, who was among the designers of the Lotus T100 F1 car. It's monocoque. Fiberglass reinforced plastic. Okay, this won't uh, accommodate ordinary doors, so going doors are used instead. Okay. It's not super powerful, but super lightweight, probably. Undeniably a sports car. Most distinctively, with a curb weight of, yeah, that little car has a huge performance potential. That little car. That little car just did it! That's pretty neat. If I had any more mid-engine uh, championships I needed to go enter and win, I would probably take that car with me. But I don't. Womp, 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 womp. Let's go ahead and do a save game here. And uh, we'll overwrite that. And uh, when we come back next time... Uh, I don't know. Might take the uh, GT1 road car out a little bit some more. Or I might, uh... Probably need to go shopping for RX-7s again, come to think of it. Um, might go find some other championships that I could go find some funky and interesting different cars for. Anyhow, this is Bobo the Vulture. This is Let's Play Gran Turismo 2. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye now.